William Tyndale, part two. I've just run across something else that needs to be pointed out. It says Tyndale was accused, this is Wikipedia, okay, so you can take it for what it's worth. It does have the sor sources cited. Tyndale was accused of translation errors. This is William Tyndale, right, from which most of the modern English Bibles get a lot of their content. It's estimated over 80% 80, 80 of the New Testament and a good portion of the Old Testament as well in modern translations derive a lot of their wording from Tyndale. Tyndale was accused of translation errors. Thomas More commented that searching for errors in the Tyndale Bible was similar to searching for water in the sea. <laughs> and charged, uh, let's see, and charged Tyndale's translation of the obedience of a Christian man with having about a thousand false translations. False translations, not just faulty, false translations. Bishop, that means intentional. Bishop Tunstall of London declared that there were upward of 2,000 errors in Tyndale's Bible, having already uh, in 1523 denied Tyndale the permission required under the Constitutions of Oxford, 1409, which were still in force, to translate the Bible into English in response to allegations of inaccuracies in his translation in the New Testament. Tyndale, in the prologue to his 1525 translation, wrote that he never intentionally altered or misrepresented any of the Bible, but that he had sought to, quote, interpret the sense of the Scripture and the meaning of the Spirit. End of quote. My question is, which Spirit? Because clearly, this is the same thing everyone says when they want to make the Bible say what they want it to say. He's not an interpreter of the Bible. He was supposed to be translating the Bible, not interpreting it. And most of the translators, even today, do not keep a distinction between translating and interpreting. And Tyndale's Bibles are not translations. They're interpretations. He himself says so. He himself says so, exactly, that he sought to interpret the sense of the Scripture, not even the Scripture itself and what it actually says. He was interpreting the sense of the Scripture, how he perceived the message of the Scripture. He then took that perception of the message of the Scripture, not verbatim, but his, his sense of it, and then interpreted his sense of it into a text. That is about as far from translation as you can get. And this is why you need to stay away from English translations today and back then. They all derive from Tyndale. Even the King James 1611. Even that one. So, it says... Um, one, one scholar writes, um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah, it says, a complete analysis of the authorized version uh, known down the generations as the AV or the King James was made in 1998. It shows that Tyndale's words account for 84% of the New Testament and for 75.8% of the Old Testament books that he translated. So, this is why you need to abandon your English Bibles and come over and start reading our translation as we finish it, because it is literally a translation of what is written in the original language. It is not an interpretation of the sense, as he says he did. It's not an interpretation of the sense of Scripture and the meaning of the Spirit. The meaning of the Spirit, using the word of the Spirit, already says that it's not of the words themselves, but it's of how he understands the message and what it means in some abstract way. He's abstracted it like two or three levels out from what's actually, literally, physically written in the original language. And then he's going to interpret that abstraction of the abstraction. And all it does is it gives him a justification in his own mind to come up with whatever he wants. 
and to say whatever he wants, regardless of what is actually written. So, come start reading the rooted word, and you'll find that it's quite different. And don't be surprised. And don't be surprised if you kick against it at first, because you're used to hearing what your ears really want to hear, rather than hearing what's written in the manuscript that God testified by himself is true. May the Lord bless you as you seek him with all of your heart.